we had one of the most incredible weekends of sports. The NFL games were outstanding, and we're going to get into all of it today. All the studs, all the duds, and we have a couple real surprising moments on today's episode. Make sure you like, subscribe, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Monday, December 19th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. What a weekend. Oh, man. Top to bottom. Saturday football. Jeff Saturday football. Oh, brother. World Cup. Sunday playoff football. This was that would be the fantasy playoffs. One of the greatest weekends of sports that I can ever remember. The amount of I mean the 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 six afternoon games yesterday, down to the wire. All of them one score games late into the fourth quarter. You had the World Cup craziness. You Multiple had overtime in the morning. The Saturday games, the greatest NFL comeback of all time, thirty three to nothing, Saturday collapse. It's just amazing. It was a lot of fun. The uh I mean it was a weekend of great consequence for fantasy players. I know it didn't work out for everybody. Unless you had a bye week and it worked out really well for you. Yeah, congratulations. You, if you had a bye week you avoided such things like uh Jarek McKinnon against you or Jonathan Taylor for you or maybe you avoided Zay Jones against you <laughs> uh, there was um, I mean it was just a fun weekend and I know like some people you went out and some people went out swinging like Mike did sort of yeah sort of swinging so, sort of swinging and or look, sort of just demolished by a bigger stronger yeah faster I, I ran into a buzzsaw in League of Record but I'm look I'm looking at this as just I get to reassess my priorities of my life. Like, what's my most important league? Mm -hmm. Actually, right. I was I was I like a fog. I was trapped last week. I thought it was the league of record, but I was guys. I was so wrong. Dead wrong. Yeah, just incredibly wrong about the priorities of which league I like the best. Yeah, because you you know <laughs> you don't have a chance to defend your title this year, right? In that league, but. In Dino Jr., Mike. Totally. So, I assume, <laughs> based on recent events, full house remodel completed this weekend? Top to bottom, every room? The house is gone. Oh. Oh, no. Yeah. It's just... Uh, Demo is finished. It, it's No, it's just a pit. Right. It's a pit with a <laughs> bottle of Jack Daniels in the middle of it, just sitting there. Empty, of course. <laughs> oh, there's, there's some empties. <laughs> <laughs> I was, got the recycling guys coming by later. Oh, yeah. Gonna make Five cents a bottle. Yeah. You got some cash coming. <laughs> But now you got a new most important league, which is all. That's it. Seems like Dino Junior is really existing to be that for you guys each year when you need it. Yeah, I mean everyone needs a safety net. That is that's smart. <laughs> that's smart. Um, let's react as we always Whoa. do. Get sophisticated <clears throat> with your pun uh, submissions on Twitter. Someone want to? I'll kick it off. Go ahead. How about uh, Jarek McWinnon? Mm. Are you talking about Jarek McCaffrey? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or the Myers remorse? Yes. A lot of unhappy people with Jacoby yesterday. Ramandre Stevenson came back from injury. Oh no! The muth hath youth. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Bad fryer poop. But yeah. I like yours better. Uh, Zonovan. <laughs> Night, night. Oh, go to sleep, little baby. Oh, Darren, welcome back. That's pretty good. How about Crazy Jones? <laughs> <laughs> or how about Rashad? Why? Oh, Nonathan Taylor. Oh, a classic is back. Raheem must start. And uh, for those of you with Mark Andrews, Tyler Stunkley. <laughs> or Greg Dolzilch. Aww. Or the way we kicked off the weekend, 
Jeff Shatterday. <laughs> well, that worked out. That one was only going to be read by Mike. Feeling good? I'm not saying. I'm just saying. You had a really <laughs> nice run with that game because you <laughs> predicted uh, it was my the almost, Colts to win. It was my almost yeah. upset. Yeah, that was your almost upset, and they just came out and dominated. <laughs> 33 nothing. they're up, they're winning in all three phases, but you also think that Mike Sa that, that Jeff Saturday is a sham and should not be head coach, and then he manufactured, or he just led, let's say he right. led, because yes. he's the leader of the men there, uh, the greatest collapse in NFL history. And the only way to give up a 33 nothing lead is to hand your playbook and every play call for the remainder of the game to the opposing team. And I feel like that's what happened, right? It was like it was very impressive. No matter what, like Matt Ryan has a gift. Matt Ryan has a gift. <laughs> Aww. And um, it's too soon. Yeah, it's a it's a shame because he he tries so hard. Yeah, but uh, thirty three nothing. That was one. Uh, like my son was watching that game with me. I'm like, you're always gonna remember that. Like, yeah. If this happens, that that was a an all timer. Now you know the iron the ironic thing of that game is that the greatest comeback of all time, if you remember, Buffalo coming back against the Oilers, Frank Reich was the quarterback. Frank Reich was the QB? Yeah. I did not realize that. He he just had his greatest <laughs> comeback of all time broken by his replacement, Jeff Saturday. Oh, man. On a Saturday. Oh, baby. To Kirk Cousins. So Frank Reich no longer has a job or a record. Yeah. You want to know how you lose a game you're up – 33 nothing in you give 25 opportunities to zach moss i mean just come on the, every time you handed the ball to him i did dude so who was the fumble it was Deion jackson right i think that led to it a little bit but yeah it was it was it a, takes it takes a village it takes a village yeah. to blow a game it was, like it was a real team effort but hey colts covered well done mike <laughs> well done and and amazingly, in the lowest yards <laughs> per catch of, I think, his career in a game, Michael Pittman. You're done right. Pity City. PPR machine, baby. Ten catches for all of. Where did we go? We built this city. 60 yards. We built this city. Brick by brick. <laughs> low walls. Low walls. Just can... pony walls everywhere. <laughs> Which, uh, unbelievable game. So fun to watch. Yeah. Lots of big games yesterday. We're going to break down the studs and duds on today's show after we get into the news news and notes from around the league presented by usaa insurance man you're pumped for this news i had a good week you had a really big one i had a big big yep. weekend it's been a, a rough year at times especially uh, the monday night situations but uh no i had a good good weekend where all the players it was a dream for our dynasty league, everybody scored. Some of them multiple times. Uh, won the wheel of shame. Yeah, you're the champ so, this week. And and you were upset last week that you didn't get the buy in that yes, dynasty league. Yes. And it turns out you did have a buy. Yeah, because your team went nuclear. Yeah, no, I've never had a week where that many players. Like I benched Ramondre after my first four players scored 120 points, and I just was like, ah, oh, let's just be safe. Yep. Uh, but, no, they had a good weekend, won the Wheel of Shame, which shouldn't be this much of an accomplishment, really. <laughs> but, um, no, I'm pumped. This is this is uh, big-time news to talk about, too. You're going to have to make some arrangements. Mm. If you have Jonathan Taylor, who has been diagnosed with a high ankle sprain and is highly unlikely to return this season. This was brutal. This is as bad as it gets. This was mm -hmm. the number two – Running back on the week by consensus ranking. So everybody thought big opportunity, big game. First week of the playoffs, first touch for him, and he looks great. Breaks off a nice run down the left and then re-aggravates the same ankle injury. And so you you had him in your lineup. He's in a hundred percent he's a hundred percent started, and he basically goosed everyone outside of that one touch. And, man, brutal. Now you've lost him for the rest of the playoffs if you were able to overcome his actual injury. Or congratulations for those of you that had to play against uh, the scary Jonathan Taylor and did not have any points uh, put up by them. 
And now you don't have a clear backup situation due to the abundance of Zach Moss carries, Deion no. Jackson. Um, I have a clear path. I'd rather be <laughs> dead than put Zach Moss on my playoff roster. I think in, in light of this Jonathan Taylor injury, which is the second of the of the year for him, um, I'm going to improv something here. Oh. I want to play a game. This is unexpected. Yes, you don't know what's coming. Um, Are you, I just do you know what's that, going on, Jason? I do not, but All I right. love playing games. I just noticed that this is the, the time of year where people are reflecting on draft picks a little bit on Twitter. So I am going to – I'm going to read you the top ten picks, and I want you to re reply with – Top ten of this year? The Top ten picks of this year, and I okay. want you to reply with a sound of oh, some okay. sort. Okay. All right, yeah. Some sort of reaction to them. Okay. okay, all right. The number one pick, this is ADP, right, in uh, PPR League. You want half PPR? I guess I should switch to half PPR. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Taylor. Ow! Okay. Yeah, yeah, Very that's nice. fair. That's fair. Number two, Christian McCaffrey. Uh, Whee! Yeah, you go with a ka on that okay, one. Okay, ka -ching. Number three, Austin Eckler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. This is what I was hoping for. Uh, number four, Derrick Henry. Oh, yeah. Nice. Thank you. Number five, Cooper Cup. Aww. Yeah. Yeah, yep. Okay. That's it. All right. That's the one. Number six, Justin Jefferson. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, number seven, Dalvin Cook. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> number eight, Najee Harris. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. Little, that was the end of season. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, number nine, <laughs> Jamar Chase. Hmm. <laughs> maybe I'm, that, I'm going maybe with that. That's, that's my sound. Okay. I wasn't thinking. That was the sound. And then let's let's round it out with. Uh, I saw a lot of tweets about this fella. Number ten, Joe Mixon. Hmm. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Because you have that, that's been the consensus. Wow. You've had yeah. flashes of dominance which shows why he was he, drafted where he was he but really consolidated into that one yeah week. i say he had the one flash. week against me <laughs> yeah but i mean he is for his opportunities you know at the beginning of the year we were talking about how great his opportunities were and mm -hmm. that the fantasy production was going to come and then it did in that game and then it was kind of back to just ho-hum and i think he there is at least for me it's compounded a, a bit by when he was out Smaje P. Ryan was freaking awesome. Like, it's so you can't be saying, well, the the scheme is broken with the offensive. Like, yeah, the backup running back was sensational for fantasy purposes. And then Joe Mixon came back, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, here we are again. Breaking news. What? Might as well get this right here on the show, Jason. Do not look down. Okay. This news is going to come straight from me to you. Have you already seen it? I have. I have no idea. Man, what, what today is just full of surprises. I know. I know. Uh, this is from uh, Please Matt. Don't be bad for my Matt team. Miller on uh, yeah at NFL Draft Scout. Texas running back. B. Oh John, no, Bijan Robinson. Oh, dun, 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 oh no, 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 no. He's declared right? announced oh, that he will not enter the. <laughs> 2023 NFL draft. Are you serious? He's going back to school? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. I'm oh, just my kidding. goodness. He declared he's going to oh. go into the draft. My, literally. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> my heart stopped the, all the beating part. <laughs> I was about to d die. <laughs> I Like, I just was if suspended. If you could watch Jason here, he was in suspended <laughs> animation. Oh, my gosh. I really believed you. I know. I couldn't I help know, it. I didn't know what to do. Dude. I was just going to break the good news, and then I saw how, in, how excited oh. you were. Oh, so he is declaring for the NFL He has draft. declared that he will enter okay. the 2023 Woo! NFL draft. Sanity prevails. For right. those that are, are not following along, Bijan Robinson, the number one running back prospect uh, coming out of Texas, an elite prospect. Not sure where he'll go in the draft because you don't generally see these uh, Saquon uh Level, McCaffrey, yeah. uh, Fournette. They, but, but he'll be the number one running back off the board. He feels special. He feels like a first-rounder. 
By the way, uh, getting back to congratulations. <laughs> thank by you, the thank way. You. I, you might as well go for the ride. Yeah, oh, I appreciate it. In hindsight, knowing that the the conclusion of the ride was fun, I'm happy to yeah. have a nice loop de loop in there. <laughs> <laughs> Al, you thought I read the tweet wrong? Yeah, I, you sold it well enough yeah. that I thought you were misreading yeah. the tweet. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, getting back to Joe Mixon. This is why, like, some of you, if you got knocked out or you're, you're out of a couple leagues and you're still tuning in, you're going to benefit from staying in tune with the fantasy community and the fantasy world. One of the things we do at the end of the year is we kind of, you know, tell you the truth about certain players. Joe Mixon's end-of-year result is going to feel better than having him on your roster. For sure. He's a... He's the number 11 running back right now. So, and that's that's number 11 with missing two games, right? So from a points per game standpoint, you're still going to think he's better, but 30% of his fantasy points came in week nine. So the truth about players uh, and what they did to get you to the playoffs or not, we will be highlighting that with all of these names in the uh, heading into the offseason. All right. Cardinals lost another quarterback. Yeah. But they now have the number four pick in the draft, gentlemen. So. Oh, that's 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 great. Also, they don't have a quarterback behind the quarterback that they lost uh, because Trace McSorley should never have been drafted in the NFL. Um, was he drafted? I believe he was. Oh, maybe he was an unrestricted free. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm an saying I, I don't agent. remember. Uh, I just remember scouting his weapons and thinking, man, this is a bad college quarterback. And then that guy went to the NFL, which was crazy. Drafted by the Baltimore Ravens in the sixth round oh. of the 2019 draft. And All we right. were McSorley sorry that we put him into the lineup yesterday. Uh, I So I was doing some math here while you were talking about Joe Mixon, who's averaging 15 fantasy points a game. He's. If you take that one week out, he's down to eleven fantasy points a game. Like that, right? That just there you go. It's not been good. Um, and it was. It, and if he was drafted as a running back too, you'd be you'd be fine. right. But he was drafted in the first round. Uh, just real quick, then I think on, running back five off the board on McSorley. I mean, if if you survive this week and you have Cardinals on your team, that's going to be pretty tough. Like, I, if, it's if a, Colt it's, McCoy doesn't come back, yeah, it's a concussion for Colt McCoy. So who knows? Because I've had some guys, or we we've seen some guys come back the week. We've seen multiple weeks missed. So I have no idea what's going to happen with Colt. But McSorley is not. He's not even a backup. The uh, emotional roller coaster of the weekend was compounded by players that exited and then returned to play after injury. That included Ryan Tannehill, Justin Fields, Zonovan Knight, Travis Etienne, Austin Eckler, and Justin Jefferson. All of them leaving the field due to injury at one point and then coming back out onto the field. Zonovan came back? I don't remember him coming back. He came back at one point. Okay. For, came back for nothing? Yeah, and then he did nothing. Yeah. So uh, Monday Night Football tonight, we've got the Packers and then Baker Mayfield's team. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I know there are decisions to be made for this evening. We did have one bit of news on Romeo Dobbs, uh, just that he basically said, you don't expect a full complement of snaps for Romeo Dobbs. So be careful. We haven't even seen him with Christian Watson and with Randall Cobb. Not that he can't make his entire day with one play, but like Mike, would you play Tutu Atwill? Yes. Nine targets, five catches, or would you play Romeo Dobbs? I would I would play the player who's trending up, not the player freshly off of injury. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. We're gonna take a quick bake break. Quick break. Quick break and come back with the studs. Not a quick bake. We don't want a quick bake, Al. Going to put together an egg bake for Christmas. Quick bake is more Martavis Bryant territory. All right, let's move on. Studs of the Week, presented by Madewell. I see Jason's fingers furiously working over there. Is that it's not Bijan no. Robinson wallpaper for your for your computer? <laughs> oh yeah, baby. I'm putting him in high res photos. I'm currently photoshopping him into all uniforms so that oh. I'm prepared uh, for wherever he goes. Very smart. You're talented. Uh, all right, studs. Joshua. Joshua Allen, you beautiful 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 man there is nothing better when the than when the best players just do what 
you know they should do and can do. And, you know, they, you get to the playoffs on Josh Allen or, or Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Excellent. Mahomes, like, it, great play, you know. Yeah. And great then they like should be great. And then they, like, use their number one weapon yeah. and, like, bring them along for the ride. It is a Stephon Diggs moment, right? Yeah. Four, what, four passing touchdowns for Josh Allen? You betcha. None of them mattered. If well, you, he was. If you had Josh Allen, they all mattered. He was knocking out. If, oh, yeah. Big week for Dawson Knox, but cool. uh, Josh Allen next week against Chicago. I'm excited. Sure, that oh. should be a fun, fun game. Justin Fields continues to make opposing quarterbacks do stuff. Speaking of which, Jalen Hurts, 22 for 37 for 315. Had uh, oh, three game. rushing touchdowns. It's monster. Didn't throw any. Had two picks to start the game. Looked a little shaky. But oh. at, one, at one point, I turned to Jason. And I said, eh, he'll figure it out, won't he? Yeah. And he said yes. Yeah, there was uh, – after those quick two interceptions and he was in your DraftKings lineup, you were like, of course. Of course it's bad. And we, we knew he'd get it together. He is currently the quarterback one on the season. Yeah. Ahead of Josh Allen, ahead of Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, and uh, rolling back to that Buffalo game, that's true. The The weather was something people were following right up to kickoff. Mm -hmm. At some point during that game, well, the snowballs were ridiculous, first <laughs> of all. And uh, so people were throwing snowballs. But when it started to – like the game was pretty clear. Like it was nice. They yeah. were able to play this game. But in the fourth, they start, it started snowing. And I couldn't help think to myself, like, should all these fans just spend the night? Like – it was like I don't I didn't want to think about them trying to get home. Oh, okay, after yeah, okay. that game with that much snow, just seemed like a terrifying prospect. I mean, you just, you mush. Yeah, right? you got a snowmobile. I'm sure that's oh, uh, how they got there. <laughs> mush. That's uh the the that, dog sleds. Yeah. Okay. They don't. They, that's not what Is they're that what doing. They do in Buffalo. Everyone I, has their own. Like I look. My view of anything in the north is everyone has. A full uh, fleet of dogs at okay. any moment. A, a fleet is what they call a, yeah. a, a group of dogs. <laughs> yeah, a, a group fleet. of dogs is a fleet. Yeah. <laughs> and um, they can get where they need to go. Some people, I'm sure, have wolves. Fewer, uh, but, you know. The, it's, uh, it's the north. Right, exactly. Or you get your cross-country skis on. I felt like we might have come to a bit of a an agreement on the dome situation, though, on Twitter, Jason. Did we? I thought so. Okay, what was it? Because I've been on, like, you know, Team Snow. Yes. But then you were kind of on, like, Team Dome. Right, yeah. But then, like, I think I'm on Team Dome for things other than snow. Yeah. The, the, which is I, where the I'm retractable on, roof I, yes, comes in. I'm on into Team a, Retractable Dome. I love – outside games are obviously better, but if there's terrible weather that affects football – and this was not that. Like, this was, this was cold, but it wasn't windy. Right. It wasn't – the weather wasn't actually bad. We were afraid that it was going to be bad. But, yes, if it's a, 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 a hurricane, rainy – Sleety. That doesn't add to the atmosphere. No, no. Rich, just be able to close it. Yeah, and they can do that now. That's one of the gifts of engineering. Patrick Mahomes. Mike called this one. He said he thought he might have a pretty good game against Houston. How about five incomplete passes on 41 passes? What I did not project in my game scripts yeah. was those rascally Houston Texans. They are. They did it again. Like, th this was, if you didn't watch it, you ever like, well, yeah, I, I assume that the Chiefs blew out the Texans. No. Uh, it was a very competitive game the entire way through. Didn't it go to overtime? Did I can't, I, I, it did. It, yeah. Yes. Okay, I mean, they yeah. took them to okay, overtime. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Now, I know uh, a lot of people, is it the Titans that we've been stashing for next week? That's correct. And I saw a lot of people on Twitter, they're saying, well, do I stop targeting the Houston Texans? I have my thoughts on that, which is they play – in Tennessee, and then at home again against Jacksonville. I'm not targeting targeting the Jacksonville defense in Houston, but I am happy to play Tennessee. Yeah, I think I still on, roll Houston. Are, are you? The, do you disagree Tennessee. with that? Take? No, I, I, mean, I, I. That's currently where I'm at. I have. Yeah, I um, saw you do. You have Tennessee's defense. I have Tennessee's defense, and I've got uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. So. I've seen that exact question on Twitter. So, what are you going to do between those two? Because the I'm Eagles starting, play Dallas, right? Exactly, and for that reason specifically, I'm going to I'm going to play Tennessee. Okay. Uh, what else do we got? We got Kirk Cousins, the Miracle Man himself, quarterback eight on the year now. After this massive comeback, he looked downright disgusting in the first half. I mean, four hundred sixty and four. That was like that's in the second half. 
Yes, he uh, he I, threw two interceptions in this game. A real uggo one uh, to in the first half. Well, they oh. were both of them. I don't know if you guys realize this. Both interceptions were to Jalen Rager. Oh yeah, both and where he stopped. They both like the reason that Jalen Rager was there for both of those plays was because Justin Jefferson got knocked off the field. I blame coaches for that. Right. Don't, Please don't like the play that Justin Jefferson goes out. Maybe you run it. Right. <laughs> run the ball. Uh, over the last two weeks for Kirk Cousins, he is on pace for seven thousand five hundred and twenty-two uh, passing uh, yards. So that's pretty good. When's his next primetime game? Uh, Watch out! Yeah. I mean, well, that that, was, technically it yeah. was a prime time game, so good job. Uh, it's an island game. Yeah, yeah, but it was a morning game. Okay. Yeah, I, it, I think, you have to be in the. I mean, the whole the idiom of like you know fading under the lights. You know what I mean? When the bright lights hit you, that's the key. He's a, he's got really sensitive vision. So like, sunrise <laughs> is not a bright light. Not in him. a stadium. No. Okay. No, you can't see the sun right then. Because of the big stadium wall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Learn about science, Mike. <laughs> Trevor Lawrence, buddy. Woo. Buddy, four touchdowns. Amazing victory for Jacksonville. Really the most impressive one on the year. Battled back. Uh, they were down big in the third quarter. Zay Jones went crazy. Mm -hmm. Trevor Lawrence is now the quarterback six on the year. The Jets in New York next week, then Houston, then Tennessee. Um, Man, there's a chance Trevor Lawrence is a key cog in a championship roster. I know those sure. matchups are not, not a cakewalk, but uh, there were opportunities for Jared Goff against the Jets down the field. I mean, he missed Jameson Williams on an easy touchdown. He ended up with the long, ridiculous touchdown to Mike's brother. Yes. Um. So yeah, Trevor Lawrence has been interesting. Trevor Lawrence has been very good over the last nine weeks. There's only two games where he hasn't been a quarterback. One, he's been playing well. The spot start, Zay Jones, we'll talk about him in a minute, has been awesome. He's got weapons to throw the ball to, and the team has been Do you realize their together. situation? Yeah, we, yeah. Talk, we talked about this on the footcast. You're talking about next year? No, this oh. year. Okay, lay it out. They control their own destiny. To the playoffs now? To the division title. Because they play Tennessee in week 18. They're one game out. Tennessee's got a banged-up quarterback. They haven't figured things out. Tennessee, I think, has lost four games in a row. That is uh, very not Mike Vrabel. Yeah. But the just for the long-term outlook here of Trevor Lawrence, he's been spectacular. The, the turnaround has been massive. I mean, we all were – when you were watching Trevor Lawrence last year, you were really, really hoping that this was not Lawrence's fault. It was Urban Meyer's fault. I think that you can uh, put a lot of that blame now directly to Urban Meyer and his coaching staff and their decisions. Uh, but we were talking with Jay on the footcast of remembering this team traded mm -hmm. for Calvin Ridley. Yeah. If Calvin Ridley has anything left, like I'm not even going to say if he could become come back and be a top 12 fantasy wide receivers – if he's just, just be something, just be a wide receiver three. Be better like, than Marvin Jones, which like, shouldn't be hard to do. Th this team with with Kirk Zay Jones and Calvin Ridley and ETN, like they're really, really interesting. They didn't Jones. even mention Schmevin. Yeah, and Sh yes, Schmevin. We try not to. We keep that on the. Hey, you're gonna have to read about him later. Oh my, he 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 made it in, baby. So, just for uh, for the record, we looked this up this morning. Zay Jones is under contract for two more years as well. Yeah, they just picked him up. He was so, kind of like a, a three-year deal. He was a cheapie. Trevor Lawrence, big game. Go Jacksonville, boy! I'd love to see a uh, couple of couple of cats in the playoffs. Sure, Jacksonville, Detroit. All right, Joe Burrow. How did he end up here after the, that first half? I don't know. Uh, it was called the gift of short fields. It was. It was the dream. Like if you had Joe Burrow, you were watching that first half. It was a disaster. In the second half, they came out and turned the ball over four consecutive times. Short fields turned into touchdowns. Only threw for 200 yards. He couldn't have uh, thrown for more. Yeah. He threw for all he of the yards. <laughs> well, they didn't give him many yards to be able to acquire. He tried to go backwards on that one sack for, yes, to did. pick up some extra yards. Smart, but. Joe. <laughs> Justin Fields. Who, baby. 14 for 21, just 152 yards. Must have been a horrible game, right? Yeah, of uh, course. Almost 100 rushing yards because he's Justin Fields. And then uh, I, that's not correct with – oh, he had two passing touchdowns. There yeah. we go. I thought that was listed as interceptions. Nope. Uh, Dak, 
Got it done. Jason start of the yeah, week. Yeah, big game. 256 and 3. Philly next week. That's going to be dun, dun, dun. such a f uh, amazing game. I mean, just the actual everything on the line. And I really and the need the good Cowboys defenses. to win. Really good defenses. I'm so scared of the Eagles. Like, it, it, are, is anybody I know else what, worried? I of, know what you're getting into here, which is we were talking about it this weekend, just the idea that you know certain teams, if they've clinched their spot and they're not battling for something, there's risk to workloads. For key players. Even in, in week, week 17. 17. Like, obviously, in week 18, that's why we don't play fantasy championships in week 18 because there are always a handful of your best players and the best teams that are sitting waiting for the playoffs because everything's clinched. I'm worried that the Eagles are so dominant this year and have the one loss, so it's not like they're going for history or anything, that week 17 is going to come around. I'm in my championship, and they play well, a half. I'm, I, I would be less concerned about the quarterback in week six, uh, 17 than I would – workloads for running backs. So my concern is that like the 49ers, if they don't have anything to gain, is that a situation you're giving Christian McCaffrey 20 no. plus carries? No, that's concerning, but I don't think you're going to lose Jalen hurts unless they're dominating the very game they're in, which would be because of Jalen hurts. Mm -hmm. So there's your encouragement. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then Derek Carr, <laughs> I guess ends up in the studs this week. What's the line of the uh, Philadelphia Dallas game? It's Dallas minus two. Which is kind of shocking. Dallas is at home. Uh, I mean, I I get it. Yeah, I mean, you you find that you thought Philly'd be favored. I mean, I thought it'd be a pick 'em. Yeah. Dallas is coming off of two losses in a row, right? They are no, they beat Houston. Yeah, we just it felt, felt like, like oh, they lost. that's yeah. right, they did win at the very end against <laughs> the Texans. All right, you ready for some running back studs? Yeah. This is Here two we are. straight running back one yeah. finishes in a row. Jarek McCaffrey, or sorry, McKinnon, eight targets, eight for 70 and a touchdown, 10 for 52 and a touchdown. Uh, he was buoyed a little bit, snap count-wise, by the Isaiah Pacheco fumble for loss. Right. But McKinnon has had so much space to work with, and if you lost to Jarek McKinnon, it doesn't feel great. Yeah, it's so funny because, you know, the Houston Texans, we've talked about it a lot about the fact that, you know, uh, the, the passing game doesn't work because you don't need to. And then they just they were up like they're in this game. It's so funny that the Texans have the last two weeks against great teams. Just they've come to play. Yeah. McKinnon did it again. And that was that was us all day in the office yesterday. Every oh, really? Yeah. Every target was. McKinnon again. In. <laughs> okay, now it makes more sense. Yeah. It is it's like a, when you have these, just you have your own little, you know, quips your own and little catchphrases that you could throw out. Yeah, it uh, makes the game a lot more fun. Like if Dalvin Cook catches like a like a kind of like a screen, and then he goes down the field mm -hmm. against you, and you're mm -hmm. like, man, he's cooking. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Right into the end zone. That's I think I, you might have used a different four letter word than I, cook. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it sounded pretty similar. I mean, D Dalvin Cook was having a. a a really tough luck game. Yes. Four goal to go from inside the five possessions where the Vikings did score. Yeah. Dalvin should have had a record, like a, a record setting, a, an Alvin Kamara Christmas Day oh, miracle. Yeah. That's, yeah. That is honestly what Dalvin Cook should have done. And he played Hamm. great the whole game. Yeah, it wasn't like, it wasn't, you know, oh, he didn't get the touchdowns. He was ripping off runs left, left, right, and center, getting them down to the goal line, and then still had a couple opportunities where he was given the ball, and, and the chance to score just didn't happen to get in. Still ended up with an incredible game because of yeah. that last long receiving touchdown. That was amazing. Derrick Henry, 21 for 104 and one. Four targets, including a big one down the sideline. Oh, such Houston. a weird <clears> – it was such a weird game for Derrick Henry where, I mean – Dominant for fantasy purposes, still ends up with 21 carries. But watching the game of why in the world is Ryan Tannehill throwing the ball so much with a busted ankle? Like it would, it was shocking to me seeing like it, this felt like a game that Derrick Henry should have carried the ball at least 25 to 30 times. The but, last two weeks, obviously McKinnon counts as that running back, but Houston's given up 36 and 39 fantasy points. Gets Derrick Henry next week, and uh, they're at home in Tennessee. So and Henry's last forever games against the Houston Texans are comic. I mean, it, if you look at the box scores, right? yeah, it's like two hundred yards 
rushing basically every single week. You better hope that Houston doesn't compete again and make Ryan Tannehill throw the ball well, too much. My hope is that Ryan Tannehill is the quarterback to throw the ball. Ooh, that'd uh, be huge. Yeah. You know, this is an ankle issue that kept him out for multiple weeks. And yes, he came back in the game and played, but we've talked about this. That happens sometimes where not able to go. That Did being you hear said, what he said about his ankle too on the no, pain scale? Huh? He said it was the maximum that you're allowed on the pain scale. <laughs> wow. Oh man. So if it's Malik Willis, you would be you'd be really hurting your chances at you want him to get down the field. Exactly. No, you 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 need the offense to be good to have touchdowns. And while you hope like oh well, the entirety of the offense could be Derrick Henry, just give him the ball 35 times and and whatever. I mean, that would He should be all right. Yeah, he he will be all right, but I I want massive big giant things of course i mean he's the yeti you you expect nothing less it's his time hey how's Ramondre stevenson's ankle doing i guess it's okay 19 for 172 you talking about the uh, you know not not starter Ramondre stevenson uh yeah well finisher yeah 19 for 172 and a touchdown damian harris if you saw it I'm, I'm sure you did mike was talking about it on sunday live out again with the thigh injury, not mm -hmm. ready to come back. Next week, Ramondre gets Cincinnati, then Miami to finish the year. He's lined up. I mean, Damian Harris, if he returns, is not going to eat in more than I think Kevin Harris and these other guys did. Do you guys disagree? I mean, Ramondre no, showed what he could do. locked in for the year. Yeah, Probably Ramond shouldn't have lateraled it to Jacoby Myers. <laughs> oh, man. That, that, that play is an all-timer. <laughs> it's just the stupidest. If you didn't see it. This oh, this game was headed to overtime. Oh, man. The Patriots had done what so many teams had done before, which is allow the Raiders to collapse from a large lead. And then Jacoby Myers throws a touchdown pass to the other team. He was, he was going for Mac Jones. Oh, my God. Why would you even throw the ball to this Mac Jones? I don't know. <laughs> Mac Jones can't break tackles, can't throw the ball. There's a forward. long ways down the field to do that too. He said after the game, and he, you know, a lot of credit to Kobe Myers. Took full accountability. Said that in the huddle, they said, "Just run the ball and go down." So this was all improvised by the players. Uh, and, so Ramondre's fault. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I mean, and Jacoby said he started quote, it. Said quote, "I saw Mac Jones and thought he was open." <laughs> oh, and then Chandler Jones. <laughs> Sent Mac now, Jones is anybody to else, the nether. I thought I was locked in on that almost upset. And then the oh, Ke yeah. and then the Keelan Cole great. the Keelan Cole foot looked out of bounds. Now see, I'm not That would have ended the game. The the Keelan Cole call I mean we we don't the the refs over the course of this weekend, they got some things wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh the the Keelan Cole catch is tough because the best shot of it was at an the angle. overhead, yeah. Like, it's the overhead, but it's coming from an angle where <clears throat> we've you experience this all the time in life where, like, your angle of viewing distorts where a, a where an object actually is. So I agree. From that view, it looked like it, but from other ones, it looked like it was in. Did you it, hear what they said after the game about that? The actual mm. NFL officiating team came and said that it was – inconclusive yeah and therefore if it had been called not a touchdown it would have stayed not a touchdown they said there was just not enough evidence yeah. to change the call on the Man. field which is the right way to do it like that is the rule if you feel like it's not clear uh and obvious then it's got to go it's, with the call well it's field. just funny when you have reviews it's obviously like the reviews are relevant because if you can't – it's the call that's made on the field. It's the live call that ends up winning when it's non-conclusive, right? Yeah. So and, and this it is, was a close one, and it was a great catch. I'm not taking anything away from Derek Carr and, and Keelan Cole. It was just – I'm staring at it. Yeah. And I still it, am shocked. It's just – it's one of those things of like how – if if this is part of your procedure is when a call is challenged, you go check out all the cameras, how is this the best – camera angle that you have buy more they, cameras they NFL. Were, they were asked if they had a down the line shot on that play and they did not which to your point is what yeah how are they not like we don't it should don't rely just on the television cameras have a couple cameras throughout the stadium that are just there for review yeah i mean just you're not gonna break the bank put them in NFL. All, put them in all the pylons go in both directions maybe we can like buy some cameras for them <laughs> 
right? These <laughs> don't have to be broadcast cameras. They just no. have, like... Do we have the catch child available to us? Oh. I mean, this would have helped this situation. I think he would have called it a catch. Yeah. Al, Al, you're sending us pictures of this, the, the, the shots that you have. Make the call. Be the catch child today. He's out. Okay. <laughs> All right, well... <laughs> It is it is crazy cuz like you said a couple more cameras like it, it's reasonable to say that this cost New England the playoffs if he was really out and we don't know. Yeah. But I mean, play can, better. Can't afford more cameras. No, we can't do that. <laughs> uh other studs this week worth mentioning David Montgomery, Tyler Algier. Yeah, baby. 17 for 139 against New Orleans. Very impressive. Um Baltimore next week in Baltimore. Not that excited about that. Nope. David Montgomery has uh, Mr. Mr. Buffalo. Yeah. So, yeah. And his uh, one of his touchdowns was also, you know, a little bit of a of a of a gift because it looked like Fields had scored on that drive on an incredible. Oh my goodness! Uh, just one of the best replays. That is not an actual highlight, but on on the. Uh, the live call is it looked like it was a touchdown and he I don't know how many tackles he broke on that run. Like a lot. Five. We were we were talking yesterday about how Justin Fields takes one stride and that's where Kyler would have three strides. Yeah, that's fair. Like he doesn't ever look like he's going as fast as he's going cuz he takes these long steps and then he's faster than everybody. Uh Latavius Murray yeah, baby. 24 for 130 and 1. I hope you jumped in the dumpster with me. Mike, start of the week. Very nice, Mike. Um, you're the guy that recommended Latavius Murray. Hey, I hope it won some uh, some weeks. Yeah. yeah, I've seen some Latavius Murray, Zay Jones teams that had <laughs> had a good time this weekend. Uh, James Conner still has gotten to the end zone. Raheem Mostert had a, uh, a big day without yeah. scoring. 17 for 136. Almost got down the sideline for a... 70 plus yard run Najee Harris scored again and has uh really he's looked so much better yeah he's come on in the second half of the year I I it tends to lend itself to the was injured narrative a little sure. bit and, and I think it, I mean it's basically a lost fantasy season here for Najee uh to come through on his draft capital but at least we can have some hope going yes, going into next year because if he had finished if the second half was the same as the first half you would Najee would be a dead zone running back. You'd have no idea what to do with him. But he has looked, uh, in in my opinion, he has looked faster. He has looked more decisive. I mean, his touchdown run with just a, a vintage Najee Harris stiff arm of of get off me. I'm scoring this touchdown. It's a, I'm hopeful, hopeful for the future. He's looked he's looked much better, no question. And it's on a team that still has not a lot of passing threats, so things could improve for him. What if he catches passes again someday? Sure. Let's talk about the spot start himself, <laughs> which thank goodness I called him that. Eight targets, six for 109, three touchdowns. Oh, baby. Zay Jones. He has three out of four top ten finishes over the last month. Plays the mm. Jets next week. Are you riding? Oh man! Are you are you playing the spot start next week? I I can't even think about it right now. Okay, it, we'll it, talk about it later. So playing against the Jets is so difficult. It is, and it's in New York. Like, did and I know Goff missed, but I mean, it's part of the defense getting you getting you shook so you don't hit on your opportunities. Did like no one from the from the Lions had an actual like impactful fantasy game I, like swift was fine like where did amon Ra end up amon Ra was okay he was okay right yeah he was uh 11.7 fantasy points seven for 76 no touchdown yeah that, like it's okay so at, but that's the guy who is a star amon Ra is a exactly. is a bona fide star is the yes. guaranteed number one target of this offense that's what you're hoping for from zay next week yeah. seven for 76 yeah so that'll be a fun decision yeah and 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 golf i mean to talk back to you know trevor lawrence golf this last week had a bad game and that includes a basically a giant like a, broken like a 60 yard or something yeah uh 60 yard i didn't touchdown. see that zay touchdown the zay touchdown yeah the long one no no we're talking about the the jared goff the jared goff oh gotcha jared goff's fantasy finish of where where he is includes 
one huge broken play. That's yes. the old, that's that saved Jared Goff from being a complete disaster. Yeah, that including that massive, yeah. basically bomb touchdown. Even though it was a screen, yeah, um, he finished with fourteen fantasy points, yeah. including that play. And they won. Yeah, they did. Go Lions. KJ Osborne had a game, ten for one, fifty-seven and one. Justin Jefferson is great, as is AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. As are AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. AJ Brown had sixteen targets. Devontae Smith had eight of them. Incredible performances by both. Dallas Goddard's coming. <laughs> He's coming for your targets, Devontae. <laughs> don't don't you put that evil on us. <laughs> uh I mean, they have two number one receivers. That's what it comes yes, down they to. Do. They're both number ones. Uh, Chris Godwin, eight targets, eight for 83 and a touchdown. <sighs> yeah. Mike, yeah. Mike, Mike, <laughs> Mike Evans. Oh, no. Ten targets, See, five for 83. I, I when, when you were doing your touchdown guarantee, which is, I mean, it's mystical in nature, I felt like you didn't con you, you didn't have a conversation with your spirits before you felt backed into the corner of having to support there's a Mike lot Evans of, there's a lot of spirits Who it's it, like it around that, right okay now game. like Christmas spirit is around sure so I might have gotten that a little bit the you wires, got your wires crossed yeah the wires yeah. crossed a little I, I understand 10 targets is nice 83 yards is nice it wasn't that was all in the first half yeah it wasn't a horrific game but still still the best <laughs> fantasy day in weeks Double digits for Mike Evans. No touchdown. Yeah. I mean, I the funny thing is, is if he had gotten in, I mean, a year over the last five years, if you had to put money dollars down, mm -hmm. sure, on any wide receiver in football to potentially score a touchdown during a given week, Mike Evans is at the tippy top of the list. Sure, He's of all the players, because fourteen that's, touchdowns last year, thirteen touchdowns the year prior, three so far this season. He plays. Arizona next week. Okay. He's scoring next week. I mean, it has to be, right? Probably. Right, Jason? Are we getting it? We need it. Yes, we are, baby! <laughs> are you willing to make it a touchdown yeah, guarantee? absolutely. It is a touchdown <laughs> guarantee against Arizona. Of that, I am sure. Noah Brown scored twice. CeeDee Lamb, big game. Jalen Waddle. One big play. Yeah, it was nice, though. He, was, he looked good. Like his speed on a couple of these plays. Tyreek Hill, 9 for 69 and a touchdown. No matter how long the game goes with Tyreek Hill not being relevant, he always ends up relevant. And then Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd all scored touchdowns after turnovers. Yep. Um, Michael Pittman, PPR special, 10 for 60. <laughs> Deontay Johnson, 10 for 98. Yeah. He he was being force-fed targets to the demise of the Muth. George Kittle led the way at the tight end position. Dawson Knox, huge game. How dare you skip that name? before Dawson Knox. Juwan Johnson. Put some respect on Juwan Johnson's name. All he does, he wants to talk about guys who get touchdowns. He looks good. He looks over a thousand times better than Troutman ever did. Hey, trust the process. Dawson Knox, though. Interesting. Yes. Against he, Chicago, he looks really good right now. He... Six for 98 yeah. and one. You can't... Not every tight end can do that, right? The athleticism to go six Agreed. for 98 yeah, yeah. and a touchdown... Saw him played in our league of record this week. Um, I mean, I th I think you're, I think you just go back to it. I think you're fine playing him next week against Chicago. Yeah, I mean, with three of the past five games, he's been at least a top six tight end. But the ones where he was not, he finished with a grand total of two point seven fantasy points combined in those two. Games. Who who would you rather play between Dawson Knox and Juwan Johnson? Dawson Knox. Yeah. That seemed pretty easy. I mean, J Juwan Johnson's been. And he, I look. It, I love Juwan Johnson, and I, I legit thinks that think that he is a in the world of tight ends. We're like, I just please give me a touchdown. Yeah, he's in your higher probability. Uh, his players, touchdown was awesome too. But uh, which which one? Which one of his two? The one that was where he stretched <laughs> like Superman. Yes. Yeah, that was uh, called not a touchdown on the field. But it's like it. Give me give me Josh Allen. Sure. Yeah. That's that's the, the tie. tiebreaker. That's a pretty good tiebreaker. I thought you just meant you'd take Josh Allen over Juwan Johnson, like straight up. Yep, for sure. That's what he meant. <laughs> mm -hmm. and Good advice once again. So say we all. Uh, Travis Kelsey was 10 for 105, and I was kind of bummed by the performance. Understandable. Darren Waller, back into the end zone. Yep. He'll be a uh, – well, he'll be in lineups next week. Mm -hmm. Evan Ingram. Schmevin. 10 targets, 8 for 62. I didn't even realize this line. That's why I, I didn't know which section. That's Evan Ingram for you. Yeah. <laughs> I – 
I, you know, you're watching a lot of games. We, I was with my family this weekend. We we're watching Red Zone. I didn't have all the screens up, so I wasn't glued in on how right. many receptions Evan Ingram oh, had. Oh man! And when you said we're going to talk about him later, I had absolutely no yeah, idea baby. which section he was in. Yeah, but, he's, he snuck in ten fantasy points, which in the fantasy oh, the tight fantastic. end position is. Oh yeah, gourmet. Yeah. All right, that was the Suds of the Week presented by Madewell. Don't wait to upgrade your denim game. Uh, go to madewell.com today and get $20 off your next pair of jeans. Use the code FOOTBALLERS20. Yeah, Shmevin, man. You know, you know who we didn't talk about in the studs who was a stud? Jahan Dotson. Oh, man. Uh, I tried to talk you into him. Oh, I, I, I was with you. Dude, yeah. like, he, he, is, he is so good. He's, a, he's talent. The... Uh, his his touchdown just leaving the defender just in a in in smoke. His uh, go up and I'll take and, that. Yes, and and sixty one the sixty yard catch, which looked like an impossibility when the ball was in the air. And Jahan Dotson, not only did he catch it, it was it was easy. Like he one hand just brought it in. There was no bobbling. It was just that's that's my ball. All right, let's ruin the moment then. Terry McLaurin or Jahan Dotson next year. Ooh, oh, Terry McLaurin. Who's the quarterback? <laughs> it's going to be Taylor Heineke. Yeah, Taylor is Heineke. Is it? I think so. I mean, it, it would be natural he to have, like, Jahan Dotson. Heineke, Heineke, yes. He's going to continue to ascend yes, and mature. There is a world where, you know, I know that Elijah Moore didn't have quite the run that a Terry McLaurin did. But from an athletic standpoint, there's a world where Jahan Dotson is the Garrett Wilson of that equation. Sure. And and to say Heineke, Heineke, he, he tied the game. Like, that. Yeah, that I mean, was some BS. That yeah, was no. the most BS. Have you heard? Uh, I watched it. Have you heard Terry McLaurin after the game his comments on what happened on the when when the ref told him that he was good? Yes. So and he gave the, a thumbs up to the ref. Yeah. yeah. There was a play where if you, if you didn't see it, they're going down to to try to tie the game. They needed a touchdown and two point conversions. Them being the Washington Manders, and they get down to somewhere around like the five yard line or so, and they have a play and they score a touchdown incredible the game is going to go tied and and uh or you know they're going to go for two and then there's a flag on the play and the and the flag is for an irrelevant terry mclaurin is not lined up on the on the ball right. he's, he's lined up just a little too legal far away legal formation yep and then if you watch the play he points to the ref the and the ref tells him to move up he moves up Points to the ref and basically gets it all good. Yeah, it's it, he it said was afterwards. Very weird. He, he said gave afterwards. A thumbs up to the ref. Yeah, he 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 said this is where I lined up literally all game and I I asked the ref. He told me to move up. I asked him again. He said I was good and then he got a flag on it. Like insanity. Yeah. And then that followed up by a, a really bad pi call. And again, you know, these games don't come down to just one call. You know, there's missed calls on both sides throughout the game, but egregious into that game. I know that. The Washington fans were very upset, and um, yeah, I need they need those refs from the World Cup final. Those oh, guys were, were awesome, excellent. Uh, but I don't know if they know. You know, well, I guess they know football. Football. All right, uh, let's move on. Pooped in his big boy pants. If you needed somebody to go oh, up, man, from the crowd. And read your eulogy for your fantasy team. Justin Herbert just took the paper from your hands, mm -hmm. and he decided, I will read it for you. I got this. Oh, man. They what? were a good team, he said. The matchup was perfect. And Justin Herbert did not throw a touchdown and was devastating. Multiple interceptions. Devastating for fantasy purposes. But he didn't have his weapons. But he no, had his but weapons. He, but he did have his weapons. Yeah. Tennessee was the, uh, I believe, 31st, 32nd in terms of pass funnel, terrible giving up yardage. Mike Williams, we're not going to use him today. I mean, this is a, I, I it's a, a rough, this is a rough, this is the rough worst year the, for Justin Herbert. Yeah, this Justin Herbert performance sums up the year, right? Yes. Yeah, his, his like, obviously, Jonathan Taylor probably was the most destructive for week one of yes. fantasy but that's not his fault this one is like herbert let you down in an un unbelievable way yes, eight fantasy points at the quarterback position oh. from justin herbert who i i was going back and forth like who do i like more jalen hurts or justin herbert as the quarterback won this week 
I was singularly knocked out by Justin Herbert this week. Like, I'm sure many as, were. As my quarterback. So I am with you, Foot Clan. If you leaned on him, this was a case of everything looking great on paper and not ending up that way. Mm -hmm. And they, they were at home, too. Yeah, so just, I mean, he threw for 300 yards, and they, they scored, but it was it was rushing touchdowns. Yeah, they won. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's the thing. is like This is a separation a little bit from fantasy to reality. Um, he, Eckler, Eckler got in for the touchdown. Yeah, and uh, jo did Joshua Kelly yep. get a touchdown as well? Yep. I mean, he did. Obviously, interception's bad, but he wasn't terrible. It's just for fantasy, he was, he was terrible. He was okay. I mean, he, yes, he ended up with 300 yards, but on the. What an interception, by the way, at the end of the half. Sure. It, that was awesome. Yeah, the Titans. Yeah, where was, they caught um, it out of bounds and they, threw it in. The old tip drill. But, like, I mean, he picked up, you know, at least 60 passing yards. On that, on the the final drive to just the playing against the prevent, trying to go down and kick the field goal, so he just to I, win the game. It was it was not a good game. I agree, in my opinion, by Justin Herbert, and as disappointing as he was at the quarterback position, to me, Miles Sanders against the Chicago Bears, mm -hmm. where every where running backs are just destroying them for it, for fantasy purposes, for real life NFL purposes. For he didn't touch the ball until like midway through the second quarter. He finishes with 11 for 42, had a fumble. It was mind-boggling that the plan did not involve him more. And so th this one to me, like he was in my DraftKings lineup because it was, he's one of the best plays of the week. He's great. He's got the matchup. And it did not happen. It he, was devastating. He did get two carries inside the five-yard line. Obviously, they did not turn into touchdowns and a massive disappointment. Joe Mixon was was awful yep. for fantasy players. Zonovan Knight, awful. Deonta Foreman, worse than yeah, awful. Just, he was a single-point player. Yeah, the uh, uh, we, we have a family league where we are where, – we're like – we manage some teams with our kids and everything. The league that I manage – or the, the team I manage, I should say, with my son, we snuck into the playoffs. Our running backs this week, Jonathan Taylor – and Deonta Foreman. So you got like two points? Yeah. Are you out? More than likely. Okay. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> yeah. That's an impressive answer. Yeah. yeah. My son, I believe, needs uh, like needs six points from, from Aaron, Aaron Jones. Jones. Yep. Jamal Williams, also a dud. And then Rashad White. This one was a That's, huge bummer. Yes. Uh, just two targets in this game. He had more carries than Fournette by one, but Fournette had four targets. Yeah, I mean, and when, this when, team when you fell turn the apart. Ball, they suck. They do suck. And what's crazy is in the, the sucking ears. In the in the oh uh, yeah, we got them. Very nice. Bust it. <laughs> um, what what was crazy is the beginning of this game was like, hey, yeah, are the Bucks yep. back? Yep. Or did they figure yes. something out? <laughs> I instantly thought in the first half, going like, oh my gosh, Brady's going to do it again in the playoffs. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, and then <laughs> collapse apotamus. So wait, they lost. The Falcons lost. The Panthers lost. Right. It's gr it's a gross division, but the Saints Saints are still in it. Yeah. <laughs> the only reason the what Saints a... won is because they played against the division. Because <laughs> they played against Ritter, and they like that game came down to the wire. Yeah, yeah against Ritter, who I believe oh he was check the box score. I don't think he threw for a hundred yards. He was. It was not a good first performance. No, no. Uh, well, let's move on to wide receiver duds, and I'm gonna I'm gonna blitz these a little bit. Oh, Just tell man. me. Tell me if you're worried about okay. next week. That's the headline for sure. People don't need to dwell anymore on the sadness of this week. If they made it through with these players, mm -hmm. are you worried? Devontae Adams. Nope. No. Stephon Diggs. No. no. Gabe Davis. It's, it's, it's same old, same old. For him, it's not is. so bad. Uh, what about Chris Nolave? I am worried. Sure. Cleveland next week. I am worried about Chris Olave because it's been a stretch of – less production and fewer snaps like I don't know why uh but he has uh, Rashid Shahid is awesome he's by legit. the way yeah he's really that good dude's so fast who's got him in dynasty oh man but <laughs> but the last I'm looking at his offensive snap percentage Chris Olave and the last month 49 67 69 and 49 percent of snaps what 
which the, I don't know why that has happened. You know, prior to that, 77, 90% of snaps. So, what if I could interest you in the uh, an over under of 33.5 points against Cleveland next week? You could. That's not right. Yes, it that's is. That's the opening line. That is not. That, 33. That's not. It's point. been bet down from 34 and a half earlier today, but yeah, it's 33 and a half right now. What? They're, have, they're I've considering. Never heard of a line have you up. seen the, the Saints offense? Have you seen Deshaun Watson playing? They're considering oh, doing just a knee to knee <laughs> offense, like back and forth, knees, 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 punt. You have me very uninterested. I am also scared of Mike Williams. Uh, I, he's. What? What happened yesterday? At Indianapolis next week. It could be fine. But Big Mike. Yeah. When does he show up? When does he not? Uh, he shows up to win the game at the end. Yeah. Four for 67. Two, two of his receptions were on I that, know. that final comeback. Which, great. I mean, you salvaged a little bit from yeah. Mike. I would I would keep playing him. Hollywood? I mean, Hollywood, you yeah, got to be if worried. If it's McSorley, you, gotta, you bail out. Yeah. Amari Cooper, four for 58. I mean, he's, he's still dealing with the hip injury. But can I interest you in 33 point over <laughs> under? <laughs> Jacoby Myers, two for 47, six targets. I mean... I'm okay with Myers against Cincinnati next week. I actually PPR maybe. I don't mind it. I feel so bad for him. I know it was his fault, but I just as a human, yes. Can <laughs> can we hit the button for Mark Andrews? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know I know I feel like he is the Mike Evans of the tight end position right now. And we're still You flat. hit the button twice, didn't you? Look, you ha I told him I told him last time <laughs> If he doesn't take that away from me, I'm not going to reprogram not hitting the ending button. Oh, man. We're, the lights are just still going. This is 100% like on Al. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not taking any responsibility whatsoever. I warned him. Al came to us. He's like, guys, I got these I got these big ideas for lighting up. Yes. Right? But you will have to but reconfigure they come with instructions. the way that your brain works for the whole show. We, yeah. I want to yeah. choose how long the panic alarm goes, Al. Do you hear me? I hear you. I might want it to run for half an hour. Since the bye week for <laughs> Mark Andrews, which was in week 10, yeah. so he's had five yeah, games let's since, read these out. since the bye week. He has not had a touchdown, and, I mean, you're talking – here's his fantasy points on a weekly basis. 9.3, 9, okay, whatever, you know, that's tight end. 7.4, 2.7, 4.6. Yeah, the games with Huntley have been – I mean, none of these, none of these are Mark Andrews numbers. That's no. the headline. And, and he's he was, not a difference maker in any way right now. And he was phenomenal to start the year. I mean, the 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 you know, you look at the first uh, up through week six, he only had one bad performance, had several amazing performances. It looked at that point in the season, six weeks in, that he was the pick to have over Kelsey. Yeah, and and then he got injured in uh, week eight. And has and then you've lost Lamar, so you've got to be worried, and you well, need Lamar back. And I don't know if Lamar's going to be back this. So week. if Lamar's not back, because this is this matters, and I know we'll talk more about it during the week and during waivers. But are you playing like Dawson Knox in a plus matchup against Chicago? Oh my gosh! Over trying to, I mean, this is exactly like Mike Evans' situation. This is where, except for you have a worse quarterback, so you yeah. can actually be more predictive I, on. Atlanta Falcons is the matchup coming up, which is a great matchup for tight ends in general, and he's still getting the targets. Seven, six, seven, seven targets. So you just stay with Andrews? I would stay with Andrews. I mean, I you know, it sucks to have to go through bad stretches. Yeah, Dawson Knox might be too low down the, the probability. But Evan Ingram right now, I mean, the Ev way he's Evans, playing with his targets. Evan's floor has to be safer. That's what I think, too. What Baltimore got Baltimore got smashed. What a world! I mean, they got they got absolutely destroyed. Three they they put up three points. Yeah, that's not a lot, not enough. <laughs> um, Pat Fryermuth. <laughs> you think he's healthy? I don't. No, it was the impossible situation of zero targets. Of and he was out there at least for some of the game. I don't know his actual snap percentage, but you saw him running routes. He missed multiple days with the foot injury and then gets the but then coming into the game it's no injury designation and it's like I don't I don't know at this point it's like what do you do with he played, those situations He played 56% of so the snaps what which he's is been exactly playing exactly yeah. 
the last two weeks prior to that was 55%, 56%, now another 56%. And obviously we've seen him be okay for fantasy in those I think, previous. I think he got a bailout. Yeah, for sure. Uh, are you worried? Here's the list. Dalton Schultz. No. No. Cole Komet. Uh, I'm not worried because I mean, he is what he is, which is a Hawkinson? streamer. No, no nine, nine targets, targets again. I'm fine with Hawkinson. But I, I, do, I do think it is worth saying Hawkinson sucks. Like <laughs> He keeps dropping balls. He's a really, really, really good player who has some mental governor in his brain that just makes him the hawk strap play poorly he has so much opportunity to be outstandingly great and he makes problems for himself over and over and over and over and it hasn't gone away this long into a career you you sound like you're describing evan ingram in new york that yeah. literally sounds like the description of evan ingram in new york um greg dulcich two targets one catch and yet Eric Tomlinson, the other tight end, three for twenty-eight with the score. So the the process was correct of chasing the tight end against Arizona, but Brett Rippon preferred not the starting tight end. For a brief portion of Sunday, the Patriots had tied Arizona with the most touchdowns given up to the tight end position. Arizona said, "We got this." Yeah, they gave that's up, our record. They gave up two, none to Dulcich. Make some real sketch moving forward the way that this offense is playing. Gerald Everett, four for 42. Yeah, he, he is who he is at this point. Najoku, man, I can't. It, it's so different to say it that way. Oh, I, I have really struggled. So we're trying to make just, you know, let's peel back the curtain. Sure. Trying to make the transition from Njoku to Najoku. And the problem is because what we've heard, what, what your we've heard it change. To, what your tongue has to do is like complete opposite. So if you start, especially if it's David, you're so used to saying David in yeah. Joku and my tongue's in the sure wrong I'm spot. I'm not sure I'm willing to do, make the change. <laughs> it's like, I tried. We'll I get gave, there. I gave it an hour. This is normally when we lean on a nickname. Oh, so that's a good point. Be thinking about it. Okay. Well, I don't have one right now. Will do. All right, we are going to uh, we're going to shut it down. We'll be back with waivers streamers on tomorrow's show, and um, boy, it's going to be a big week. I'm excited. Yeah, it, I mean, we still it's not done. Like I know there there's a lot of important fantasy pieces going tonight. May all of your important pieces do well, your opponents do poorly. Absolutely. Enjoy the evening. We will see you in the morning, Foot Clan. Enjoy the game. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.